Hello and welcome back to my newest SQL Server Quickie. Over the next three months I want to cover the various recovery models that SQL Server supports for a given database. The recovery model influences which database backups you can perform and how much data loss you will experience if you have to restore your database in the case of a failure. Today I want to start by talking about the recovery model simple, which is the simplest one that SQL Server supports. I want to show you now on the flip chart how you can work with the recovery model simple. Imagine we have our timeline, our time axis, and we perform regular full database backups. And in addition, we maybe have some differential database backups that we also perform regularly. And now imagine our database crashes at a specific point in time. Maybe our database crashes here. In that case, you have to restore your restore now your database from the latest backups. Means we take our latest full database backup that hopefully works and we restore our database up to that point in time. Now, if you're lucky, you also have a differential database backup available. Like in our case, means we also restore that one and we have restored our data up to that point in time. But that's it with the recovery model simple. You're losing all the transactions that you have generated since your last full or differential database backup. So you have no, no way to restore those individual transactions. Those transactions are just lost. That's the biggest side effect of the recovery model simple. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to show that behavior to you. In this demonstration, I want to show you how you can work with the recovery model simple. First, let's create a new database. By default, every database uses the recovery model full, which I also always recommend. Therefore, we now manually change the recovery model of the previous created database to simple with an alter database command. In the next step, I create a new table within our database. If you not try to perform a transaction log backup, SQL Server will not allow it because it is not supported in the recovery model simple. But you can perform a full or differential database backup. So let's try to perform a full database backup in the next step. This works of course without any problems. But the side effect of the recovery model simple is that every transaction that has occurred since your last full or differential database backup will be lost when you have to restore your database in the case of a failure. For example, when you perform an insert operation and then you have to restore your database from the last full backup, these inserts will be lost. Ouch. Therefore, you should never ever use the recovery model simple if you deal with a workload where transactions are changing your data. Never ever rely on the recovery model simple for a production database. In this recovery model, you can only perform a full and differential database backup. All the transactions since the last backup will be lost. Therefore, it is a no-go to use that recovery model in databases where you will also have transactions that change your data. The recovery model simple can be good for databases where you deal with mostly static data, like data warehousing databases. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server Quickie and I'm already looking forward to welcoming you again next month when I will talk about the recovery model full. Stay tuned and enjoy your month.